What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It has been a while since I've sat in this chair, talked in this microphone, and overall done this whole podcasting thing. I started this podcast shit, and this is the motherfucking thanks I get. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 uh, we, we took a break for a little bit, um, but obviously this is not the first podcast 2021, but this is another great podcast nonetheless. Um, this is uh, 2021, like I've been saying. We, we released our slate of what we're planning on doing this year. It was like a it was like a Marvel film or like a Marvel presentation or Star Wars presentation. We just were like, this is what we're doing this year. Get hyped. And uh, it, 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 uh, we have a lot of good stuff planned. But today with my, I'm sitting here with my guest who uh, I hope will be a part of some of that stuff in the future. Um, this is a YouTube channel that is growing right now. Uh, good friends of mine, the Omni Adventures, uh, Marlene and Nanny. I've uh, done a lot of stuff with them over the, the, the past October, like November, September, August, May? no, September through November, I think. I don't remember. September Wait. for sure. September for sure. I know October we did a couple things. Um, we did a lot of things over the haunt season. If you don't remember, Manny was actually in our, um, when we went to the haunted corn, ma corn maze, uh, that was fun. Um, had a good time. Manny actually hooked it up that night, uh, letting us do a lights on POV. Uh, but yeah, we had a lot of fun. I think that was probably one of the funniest videos I released that haunt season, to be honest. Like, it was a good one. <laughs> it, it, was, the reactions were raw. It was just nonstop <laughs> fun, madness, yeah. a lot of madness. Um, and then of course, uh, they also made an, uh, a small cameo in our, uh, taste of Halloween vlog that we did, uh, which was another great event. There was a lot of, I mean, but despite 2020 being what it was, there was actually a lot of good stuff this year or yeah. last year. Um, and we had fun doing a lot of stuff, but uh, I stumbled across this channel because I, I remember Manny had told me he wanted me to be in a video, I guess, talking about music with horror related stuff. And from there, we just kept talking and kept talking. And uh, one thing led to another. We've just kept in contact. And yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. So tell me a little bit about the channel, man. How did this whole Omni Adventures come to fruition? <laughs> well, um, to be honest, it's something I had thought about and it's something I honestly kind of tried twice before. I gave up both times pretty quickly. And I think the reason being is I tried to get into this whole thing, not alone with someone else or with like a group, for example. And I don't know, it's, I have a big passion for having fun. And I guess everyone else around me just had a different idea of what they wanted. And then I met Marlene, decided to try it one more time. And it just worked out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you guys don't know, uh, if you guys don't, first of all, if you guys are not subscribed to the Omni Adventures, go subscribe right now. Like stop, pause this video, go <laughs> subscribe to their channel and then come back and finish this video. And then after you're done with this video, go watch all their videos. Um, Thank you. Subscribe to their channel. They do a lot of uh, fun, family-friendly uh, entertainment for all. Um, for the most part. I yeah. try not to let something slip. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, no, they do it all, really. They, they, they go everywhere. They, they do everything. Uh, they have content for all ages, really. Um, so if there's something on the channel that finds your interest, definitely um, – check them out obviously they, they do really good content but uh what i like about it too is you guys are actually a couple uh who go around yeah. a couple uh, of friends hey <laughs> excuse me friend zoned where's the chunkla damn um, Bring it out. <laughs> no but I, I, <laughs> I do i do like that about you guys that um I, I you could see that you guys actually have a lot of fun doing what you do uh as far as you know, filming all the adventures and going different places, doing different things. And I've actually firsthand seen behind the scenes of, of how the videos are made. And it's just even more fun behind the scenes than it is in front of a camera. Um, wh <laughs> what do you find the, the most fun about doing what you guys do? Obviously, you guys go, um, I, I, from my, what I understood, and I don't even know if content's out yet, if you guys, uh, but you guys just got back from Vegas. Yes. Obviously, yeah. that, that's a lot of fun. Um, what do you guys find the most fun about doing all these adventures together? 
Well, I think something that we made a big deal, especially from the beginning, is that we didn't want it to just be theme parks, even though that was like a big point of yeah. it. We wanted to have fun everywhere. And so um, I don't know. I just it's just fun coming up with all these adventures and like little side road attractions mm. that we can do. And maybe one day we'll just find like a random place to eat. And so like it doesn't confine us to one place. Right. You know? it, it's kind of odd for someone like me because in general. I'm very plan oriented, very organized. I like to know all the details. But when it comes to having fun, I'm as spontaneous as can be. Like I know I'm driving north, right? But where I'm gonna stop, I'll figure out tomorrow when I can reflect on that. It's a little weird with that dynamic too, because I get like really stressed out if I don't know what's happening. Right. <laughs> so he tends to like make a side plan or not a side plan. He tends to make a plan and then once in a while we'll be like, should we stop by that gas station? Should we stop by that attraction? Yeah. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just an adventure from there. Just in general, that's that's just our lifestyle. Um, obviously, it's not to the extent of international travel that gets expensive very fast. Yeah. <laughs> but we live very spontaneously. The majority of our adventures are not filmed. They just happen. Before mm -hmm. we started the channel, I was going to Universal Studios like three, four times a week. I was living in the dorms here in Hollywood. Um, and that's just what it was, you know? Yeah. So might as well pick up a camera and start documenting. We did a lot of things, too, that we kind of didn't record, like going to the, um, was it the Roosevelt Museum? Roosevelt? It's a president's museum. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's what you're going to see that my brain is not fully something to them, so. What she's referring to is in Simi Valley, the Ronald Reagan Presidential <laughs> Library. Roosevelt. <laughs> Roosevelt. So it's a library, not a museum. It's a library, but it's kind of like a museum. I don't okay. know. We did a lot of things. We also did um, scary movies. I like scary movies. Yes. That was fun. I, I'd done that. Yeah. Both times it came. The first time it came around, uh, they were in a no air conditioned building. It was freaking middle of the summer, boiling on that building. And the second time they came around, they're like, "We got a building with air conditioning." I'm like, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went in in 2019, um, and I told Marlene we were still friends at the time, and I was like, "Listen, you want to hang out for once?" And she was like, "All right, what do you have in mind?" And I'm like. It's better we just get there and then tell me what you think. <laughs> yep, and that was surprise. shot. That's, that, imagine what, she, what if you would have walked down. She went like, "That was horrible. Don't ever fucking talk to me again." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a very, I'm a big scaredy cat, and I think you witnessed this firsthand. I did. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get scared by everything, but I'm fascinated by it too. So it's like a love hate relationship for me. Yeah. Uh, the, the moment she was referring to was actually uh, when we when we did a Drex Society this year for their Fear Fest 1941, and they were doing a Lights On tour, uh, and I was hanging out there all night. I was hanging with Sean. Uh, they were really cool guys, and uh, I had met up with them. They had a time slot, and <laughs> when they were doing the Lights On tour, we passed the Phantom area going into the, the um, Dracula area. Manny's in the – what happened? That's the very first room. <laughs> yeah. Very first room, uh, Manny's in front filming the, the lights on tour, and the actor playing the Phantom um, actually comes out a little bit behind the uh, from behind the plexiglass and, and just stares at me and Marlene, and I tapped on her shoulder, and she turned around and got, like, scared and then kept walking. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I don't do good with scary stuff, but it makes for good content, so this is why I do it. I, I think we have a, a – a, we, we might have a series on our hand for, for this haunt season then and just, just take – while, while Manny's out working, just me and Tanner are going to take Marlene to all the scary spots and just film her reactions. Maybe we'll give her a GoPro. I got a GoPro, so we can strap a GoPro on. And if then... you don't know how much I love this man, the first year that he did, like, the Haunted Hayride, I was supposed to go with a friend, right, who he got a ticket for, right. so I wouldn't go alone. She ended up getting there, like, an hour and a half late. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to miss his maze, <laughs> so I'm going to go for it. <laughs> so I go towards the... Um, roadkill ranch is that roadkill. what it's called i go towards roadkill ranch 2019 and i see that there is no line i'm like oh my goodness <laughs> i'm gonna have to go alone and by that point a cast member had already like saw me so now i was committed you know <laughs> <laughs> they saw me so i had to go through that line 
all by myself. Like, she's she's oh. walking through the long line. She's like, Mama didn't raise no pussy. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much as like the actors reeling me in like come on you're ready you're ready right it's like, no, this is like that scene from Shrek. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was pretty much what it was and so i went through that whole maze by myself like crying the whole way through <laughs> until i reached and i'm like hi and i was out traumatized i ran out the rest <laughs> Yeah, and it's funny too because you have to go through the entire maze to just to get to his scene because his, his was at the near end. He was all the way at the end. It was terrible. <laughs> you had no choice but to walk through that entire no, maze. He walked so close to me too. This was pre-pandemic, so it was fine. But like any time, all the contortionists came from like the hay area and stuff. Like <laughs> there was a random hanging man there. There was people with chainsaws following me. It it was not an enjoyable experience. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the best part was after she came through, I, you know, I had my interaction with her. I was like, ha ah, I, I love you, but I'm still going to scare you because it's my job. <laughs> uh, a chainsaw performer came by and was like, yo, did you see that there's a scaredy cat here by herself? And I'm like, yep, that's, uh, that's my girlfriend. <laughs> she's like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, nah, she's fine. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> nah, she's fine. I hope. <laughs> that was an experience. Afterwards, I think I like vented all my frustrations to like the characters they have out at the picnic tables. Right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I just came to visit someone, and they're like, oh, really? You having a fun day today? <laughs> I like, think, I know uh, they're not listening to me, uh, but who else did I have to confide in? I, I think you need to try out for Hayride next year to be one of the Midnight Falls villagers. I could probably do it. Then you guys can go to work together. Boom. <laughs> we might go to work together anyway. I, there's a good chance <laughs> I'll actually be at Horror Nights next year. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I remember you telling me about that. Um, let's let's just that hope. For an idea this year, man. Let, let's just hope Horror Nights happens this year. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that this year is <laughs> 10 <laughs> times better than last year. Because um, I don't think I could do another year without haunts. I really don't think so. I mean, Regardless, we got a lot of good, solid, amazing home haunts experiences, drive through experiences, which I don't think you'll ever get to experience ever again, especially with the whole um, Hayride, which you worked this year too, Manny. Uh, we'll talk about right now, but especially with the whole, uh, the whole uh, concept and idea they had this year for the LA Haunted Hayride, I don't think you'll ever see anything like that ever again. Um, I think that was a once-in-a-lifetime kind of deal. You know what I mean? Like that was something that you'll probably, if you were, if you're a fan of Midnight Falls and of the Hayride, uh, that expands the lore and story at, at a, like a new part of Midnight Falls. And I think that was a once in a lifetime thing. That if you want to keep with that up with that story, um, you would you would have had to been there to see that one. So, yeah, man, I, I it's been a rough year. I'm just glad yeah. it's over. <laughs> um. It's sad to say that I don't want more drive-ins or drive-throughs because, you know, we were so thankful for them this year. Right. The reason being is there's no beating a walk-through attraction. There just isn't. Yeah. It's amazing to see how creative people got, though. Like, the haunted car wash, I was not expect expecting something like that to become so big. That was... That probably was what egg. surprised me so <laughs> much. That was fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, yeah. <laughs> The best part is uh, Rob's wife is much like you. She she uh, she'll put up with all the scary stuff, but she doesn't like it. Um, so <laughs> when we went, uh, we took her car, and I uh, I was in the back, and Rob was in the front. His wife's driving, and uh, I, I told everybody like when we got there, like everybody excited, and then Rob was like, "Yeah, I'm excited." And then her his wife was like, "I'm excited that I'm gonna be getting my car washed," <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> The funniest thing is, I don't know if you guys know um, Scare Actor Forrest, um, or if you ever heard of him. Uh, he, very talented guy, and um, he was our first interaction uh, going in, and uh, he, he would just talk with us, and he knew all about us and everything, which was hilarious. And the funniest thing I remember was uh, she, like, secretly locked the door, but he heard that. And he goes, oh, you done messed up now. And then he reached over, unlocked the door, opened it, and then went in and got in her face. And I was just dying of laughter. No. Oh, my goodness. I mean, 
there was even they, I mean, you think that was bad. I mean, they they I think at one point also they also made Rob get out of the car. They gave him a squeegee and made a made him wash his own car. Uh, <laughs> that was just going into the car wash. That was hilarious. But I had saw footage of um they they if you're Doors were unlocked during the car wash. They even unlocked your door. They even opened your door during the car wash. So yes. there's a chance your door could be filled with your inside of your interior could be filled with like soap and water. I mean, I just wonder how they got away with that. I mean, <laughs> they I they were all wearing masks on top of their masks. You know what I mean? Um, so they were they were doing that. Uh, yeah, but I am surprised a lot of how they got away. I, I think they were. I mean, there was one point where a guy literally had a chainsaw and he like put it in the car window and it came pretty damn close to me. Like I had never been that scared in my life, but it was also the coolest thing of my life. <laughs> like I almost died, but it was cool. Like I would have caught that on camera and that would have been my last will and testimony. So oh my God, do you tell Anthony about the time you got like drenched in gasoline from the chainsaw? I think you did tell me about that. Yeah. I remember that that was this year, right? Correct. Yeah. It, it like malfunctioned on you or something like that. So um, I do this bit that probably no other chainsaw artist will ever do or should ever do. Um, I'm a trained discus thrower. And in discus, you spin around a lot. And it's all about you know maintaining your weight to get the most propulsion. But I also have really good finger strength. So what I did was I grabbed the chainsaw and I spun the whole 100 yard stretch with the chainsaw completely outstretched. But I like locked my finger so it wouldn't slip out. In other words, you were doing a, a Leatherface tribute. <laughs> yes, but with one hand. Yeah. And then, so I started doing it, and then I realized I was just getting really cold, really nasty, and I was like, what is that? And then my chainsaw turned off. And I was like, huh. I looked down, my little gas cap was completely off. Oh. And I was completely drenched with a freshly refueled chainsaw. Oh. All over me. Um, I just immediately ran off set, uh, got to the side, a uh, little side area we had, we called it a uh, base camp. Right. And I started dying because <laughs> all, all the fumes went into my mask and I was already wearing a PPE underneath that. Right. So I just couldn't breathe. So I threw everything off and I started like gasping for dear life. I, but it, it happened at the end of the night. So it was all kind of a blur, but it was a rough end <laughs> that day. Oh my god, that that's just a scary thing. Just to imagine, like, imagine if there was, if there had been fire effects or anything right there near you, like, would have been even a worse time for you, man. Like, it would have, it would have been like some WWE shit where they light them on fire, and <laughs> next thing you know, the show just gets stopped right there, and they have to put you out, you know. So, I'm okay. glad you're okay though from that. Thanks. That was a good segue though. Speaking of, you know, Hayride, obviously you've been, you've been, how long have you been doing scare acting now? Uh, this was my second year. Second year, and you've been at Hayride both years, correct? Correct. Uh, so the first year you were there, you were in Roadkill Ranch. What did you play? Uh, I played a character called um, Ground Beef originally, which was right. this bull mask. And there's not a lot of footage of me in that particular outfit because I hated it and I wasn't in it for very long. Um, because we, we went through a lot of cast people. A lot of people don't expect scare acting to be as physically demanding as it is. And they think, oh, I can do this. It's nothing. It's just, you know, boo and whatnot. And so as more and more people quit, I kind of started to gain a seniority. Picked, oh, you're leaving. Let me get this mask. Let me get this. Until I created my entire new costume called Razor. Nice. I think I actually, the because oh, I went opening night. Um, shout out to uh, 13th Floor who gave out. That's the company, right? Thirteen Floor Productions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how we got our yeah, You definitely saw me uh, with my. my yeah, Grandy. I was there opening night. I, I had free tickets. Uh, thank, shout out to them, Midsummer Screen, hooking it up, free tickets. That was cool. Um, but yeah, I, I was there opening night, and I think I actually have footage of you. Yes. Scaring me, yeah, in in the walkthrough. Footage, the, the one I'm like so proud of because the very first YouTuber I fell in love with was Adam the Woo. Right. I he made a video coming to the event and I was in my little bull mask and went Adam woo and made it in the video and it was like 
I don't know. I rewatched that clip like 50 times probably. I, I, I do remember <laughs> uh, we did have an interaction with Adam the Wu at uh, Taste of Balloween. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember just watching you fanboy over him. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I had gotten that moment to do that uh, the previous year when I when I saw him for the Bloodshed Brothers Media Night. Uh, and I had a full – because there was not a lot of us there, so I had a full conversation with him and was just talking with him. And from then on, like, he remembers me to this day, which I thought was amazing. A guy that's, like, I think at, like, 500,000 subscribers, and he still remembers me. Like, that was that was really cool. But, um, yeah, I saw Adam the Wu in 2019. I saw him a lot, like, at every Han event, like, or even, like, when I'd show up at Disneyland randomly to go with Sammy. I saw him there a lot. Like we showed up one time during uh, what was Life Day at um, Galaxy's Edge. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Star Wars made a very terrible holiday special um, back in like the '80s, and they celebrated what is Life Day on the Wookiee planet Kashyyyk. Um, and it was basically Chewie going home to his family. Life Day was basically their Christmas. Um, so a bunch of Star Wars fans met up in front of Rise of the Resistance, wasn't open yet, and uh, they all started celebrating Life Day, and Adam was there, and I, I had another full-on conversation with him. Um, but safe to say, every time I've talked to Adam, he's been the nicest guy possible. Um, 100%. Yeah, I, I was a little sad to find out he moved back to Florida, but I, I know why he did it. Um, obviously, with California, there's not really much you can do over here as far as um, theme parks and content, and that that that's his that's his thing though. He goes to the theme parks, he goes on adventures, and you can do more of that in Florida than you can over here in California right now. So, um, but yeah, Adam, very nice guy. Glad you got to scare him, and I and I was there when he had his fanboy moment at Taste of Halloween right in front of the tribute store. My mom was there too. She was your mom like, was there too. That's him. That's him. Oh my god. Even your mom <laughs> knows, man. That's yeah. That's legit. Uh, I'm telling- Eight years, watching <laughs> eight years straight, and I was like, I want to live my life like that guy. I know that guy had a, has a life, man. Uh, I think he spent like a whole two days talking about how Adam the Wu lived in a van and like how how fanboyish you were about it. I, I remember those days. Yeah, because I, I I would watch him religiously when I was in middle school and the beginning of high school, and then I stopped watching him for a little bit, and then I slowly got back into him, and then every now and then I'll watch a video, um, but. I keep up to as to what he's doing and, and how he's doing. Um, but I remember the van days. I remember when he sold the van, got the RV. I remember when he got the drone. I remember when he finally moved to California. Uh, I remember when he left California again to go back on the road. <laughs> I remember when he uh, went to Florida back for a little bit. Then he went came back to California. Like, the guy lives a freaking Where bachelor's life. <laughs> yeah. That guy is something else. But... So 28, 2019, your first year, uh, good year, I'm assuming. They, they wanted you back for 2020, man, which was a very tough <laughs> year for the Han industry, man. So tell us a little bit about your 2020 season. How was it different from the 2019? Obviously, there's a lot of big changes with the whole pandemic and everything. So I think the biggest change and the thing that was just, it made me appreciate my position so much more is this year, the hiring was so much stricter it, it was just a lot harder to be a part of this production because all the other hunts were canceled. And we had this conglomeration of the top talent from around the different haunts. So I got to meet all these great people, our performance manager, uh, Frank Shandling. He's directly from Horror Nights. He's the one who was like, all right, come through. I got you. <laughs> um, and John Cook, he was the one that put it all together. He was the mastermind behind this entire orchestration. And to know that John Cook acknowledges me as a pretty dope scare actor is just the like, Cook Book, man. We love the Cook Book. Yeah. <laughs> we uh we started the phrase, but he is the sole author and creator of the Cook Book. All we did was just slap the title on it. True. I but, mean, I, I think Sammy started that. I mean, I, that, I, when I thought of that, I was like, that is a good name, the Cook Book. It was because every time I think last year when we were going to Knotts, like or in twenty nineteen when we were going to Knotts a lot. We would go through all these mazes and go, yep, that's a that's a John Cook thing. And then eventually Sammy was like, oh, yeah, that's part of the cookbook. And I'm like, that is genius. That needs to be a fuck- that needs to be on merchandise. And sure enough, we got it on merchandise. And I actually shipped him a I, – I, I actually bought him a cookbook T-shirt. So He wears it. He, he does? It. Does he wear it? Yes. That is Aww. cool. That makes me feel better. <laughs> he likes the shirt. He appreciates everything you guys do. I've had a conversation about him. 
or with him with about this entire situation. I uh, I, I the, the guy not only is a living legend in the haunt scene, but now he's doing the behind the scenes of everything. So that shows how much love he has for this business, and that shows us the fans uh, how appreciate appreciative he is of the fans for coming to these events and god damn it if he does an event i will be there because i just love anything that guy does i mean on top of it the coolest thing that that i had as a personal connection was i listened to his music from his band winds of plague right way before i got into the haunt industry and so i was like wait is that the same guy and everyone's like yeah that's that's his thing don't you see the myspace banner like, MySpace. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, freaking go back to MySpace. Can we bring that? Can we bring that site back? Twenty twenty one. I don't remember. <laughs> twenty twenty one will be the year of revivals. Let's bring back MySpace. I just remember emo people on MySpace. In all honesty, it's kind I, of a memory. I remember <laughs> in MySpace, you you had like a whole theme to your page, and then you can actually have a song. So every time someone clicked on your profile, the song would start playing. And that was the song that like represented you. Like that was really cool. Oh goodness! I forgot what my I, song was. I kind of missed the cusp of MySpace because Marlene and I were both twenty. Right. Uh, so it's a really awkward age where we know and watched a lot of the cartoons and stuff that people from the '90s did. Mm. But also, we grew up with the newer stuff from the 2000s that all the '90s kids like to hate on. So it's just we're, we're those people. Hey man, I I watched that Carly. I watched Zoe 101. I watched Drake and Josh. <laughs> I watch Wizards of Waverly Place, Sweet Life on Deck, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. I Yo, watched all those, man. Hannah Montana. I was there. Um, I rewatched that more than I'd like to admit. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. It was a good show. All right. <laughs> more about you every day. Um. <laughs> the, the haunt experience. Not only was it different because it was a totally different community. And everyone's like, oh, where have you been? Or I've done this, or yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, it is only my second year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, like 20 plus years. And the experience in general was just so cool to see how other people are used to scaring right. versus how we had to adapt for the given circumstances. Not right. being able to get near people, you know, having OSHA there every day watching us. <laughs> It's scarier for the actors being there than it is for you guys, I promise. You got out so late, too. It was like 2 a.m., drenching in all your sweat. That sounds yeah. about right. I, I heard, I've had heard stories like when knots would end at 2 a.m., they wouldn't get home till like 4 or 5 in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm surprised he didn't get sick or he hasn't gotten sick. I don't know. What, what was it like in between shows? Because I, I remember with Hayride this year, it was a lot different. They had set shows like every, what, 30 minutes or 45 minutes or something like that. Yeah, it was uh, 45 minutes on, 45 minutes off right. for everyone, which is something I've never experienced. Apparently, at all the other haunts, they do, like, you're on for this time, you're off for that time. And I'm like, huh? Because last year at Hayride, we were just on for the whole time. We right. took a 30-minute break, two 10-minute breaks, and that was it. Knots is the same way, I believe, too, at least with scare zones. Um, I don't know how they are with mazes, but I know with scare zones are the same way. It's the two 15s and the 30 minutes, so. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. It was just so fun. Um, I got the experience of being with legends that actually helped create the events, such as John Cook, Ted Doherty. So they were there, obviously, but very few scare actors can say that they have scared besides all those legends. Right. I, I remember a couple nights towards the end of the run, uh, they were they're gearing up and going out there and scaring, and I was so pissed off that I missed those nights. <laughs> about to call you up, be like, "Hey, bro, sneak me in. I want to see this shit." <laughs> hey, it was it, it was quite a sight. Yeah. Tom Cook, he him and I, our, our dynamic was just electrifying. Man. So I would get out there and be like, "Come on, you know, six two, three hundred plus pounds, and really hard to miss." And then John Cook just came in from behind, like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, murdered everyone with these little finger metal washers. I'm curious, <laughs> was anyone able to like sneak into the event or no. was that just not a thing? People didn't sneak into the event because we had to assign you to a car to a spot. Mm. So, yeah. Unless yeah. someone unless someone drove a car in, knew people that were sneaking in and then boom. Like a just, little bike. They yeah. just snuck in and then they just got into the car. Yeah. <laughs> I, the only thing that I should have anticipated but I didn't is how nasty some of the customers got 
So a lot of the VIPs specifically, they felt because they had a wagon, they could do whatever they wanted. And so a lot of them brought just giant cases of alcohol. So they're just maskless, drinking. And they let that in? I guess they didn't check the cars or something. I don't really know. No, they didn't. I know they didn't check cars. Cars, yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm surprised that even with them being inside the the wagon that they actually like didn't catch on to that like cause there, i know there was security walking around throughout the entire performance oh we did and a lot of those people had to be not only kicked out but there was actually a police station right down the road because i mean you're at a drive through event and you're drinking alcohol yeah yeah How are you gonna get home buddy yeah no i i uh i had i got the the fortunate opportunity to go twice this year uh one with the vip which i think was one of the best experiences, if not the best experience you can get. Uh, more bang for your buck. You just grab a bunch of people and, and I'll chip in. Um, yep. That was fun. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, and also, like, on top of the wagon, you have the option to actually sit in your car, too. So you don't have to sit in the wagon. Um, like, if you're going with a bunch of people and, like, you want to sit in your car and they want to sit in the wagon, like, you have that option to do that. So more, pretty much more seats for everyone, you know what I mean? Like, or more space to spread out. Um, but we got a wagon, and that was a lot of fun. Um, chairs were very comfy, nice little, uh, decor everywhere. And, um, I got to see Manny scare a couple of times. Uh, he came by our, our, our wagon a couple of times, which was really fun. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll never forget. I saw Anthony and I was like, what can I do to let him know that I'm me? So I was just like, <laughs> yeah, real quick. And I'm like, I know who that is. And then he walked away. <laughs> 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 we walked away. That was that was hilarious. Um, and then I got to go again, and the second time I was in the very back row. Uh, but I still had a great experience, even in the very back. Like so that that shows you that they really take care of every row the best they possibly can. I mean, I saw everything perfect. Um, you know, I saw the characters very interactive again, um, and I I think that uh, I had fun both times that I went. So. Uh, for all the people who didn't enjoy it, I mean, like, you got to remember, they, like, I think they literally had weeks to put this on. This was, like, super last minute, and even yeah, then, so it came out some, great. Some details that we didn't even learn till like, halfway through the season is that our biggest discrepancies were the city. Right. Initially, we actually got cleared to have a genuine walkthrough event, to have a hayride with some, like, compartment-style things that was along the times that but that was the time where we, we, we blah, blah, sorry I, I can't talk yeah. I'm just like all over the place right now <laughs> but that is when we thought we had a grasp on everything right we thought, we're gonna get it going we're gonna keep it safe yada yada and then months out city's like no we, you're, you're not gonna have your event and then we're like all right let's do a drive-through at Griffith Park which a lot of people had anticipated including myself <sighs> No, you can't have it anywhere in our city. So we had to move all the way out to uh, San Dimas. Bill and, and Ted. Like, all right, you can do, a, you can do a, a, a drive-in. The only reason we really picked the location was because, one, it was big and available, Raging Waters. Um, and two, it's maybe 10 minutes from the actual 13th floor warehouse. Right. So it was a really easy move. No, I and I bet, and on top of that, you know, Raging Waters, uh, I mean, that, I think that was a great location for it because you're in the off-season of summer. So, And on top of that, COVID was happening, so Raging Waters was not open. So that parking lot was just vacant. So it was perfect for a setup of a drive-in theater. Um, and I, and, I, and I, th- I do think uh, – and I, and I did enjoy the little Crypt TV shorts, and I, and I, I probably – and you probably know more about this than I do. I think they originally wanted to make their own – like shorts to, to tie into Midnight Falls. And I think the Monty Revolta stuff, and I, I am a huge Monty Revolta fan. I That guy, you can give me a whole event with him and I will, you have my money. You can take it all because that guy is hilarious. But um, I know that because this was such last minute that they did, they kind of just threw the, the Crypt TV stuff in, but I know they wanted to film some originals, just didn't have the time to do it. But I, I still think the entire event with it, the little in between of Monty and, and you know the Crypt TV and then everybody who was out in the actual like in between the cars and everything were really selling and telling the story of what Monty was sharing. On top of that, in between the Crypt TV, like you guys were all still running around being creepy and, and sneaking up on people, which I thought was freaking great because if it's a good scare 
you didn't realize how much these scares worked until that you had to test them out. And especially when people are paying attention to something and not really focusing on anything else, it's the best time to get them. So. Absolutely. And the thing is about the shows, so you're 100% right. We initially wanted to create our own Midnight Falls movies based around the townsfolk and then a little bit extra. But we just didn't have time. We 100% didn't have time. Crip TV came in clutch. Monty, the entire reason Monty is associated with the event because of Ted Doherty. And I don't think he gets enough credit for that. Ted has known Monty for years and years. Uh, he was a big fan of his work. And last year in 2019, he was like, you know what, Monty? Get your butt over here. And he was a fan favorite, absolutely. And it was Ted's idea to make him the spotlight this year. And it just worked. It worked so well. And we didn't really control Crip TV. Um, and that's what we had to go with. So what we decided to do was to just create the event kind of surrounding the films and the music. So some of the scenes with the actors were a little more geared towards the actual musical compensations or compositions. And then other ones were just based semi loosely on the film. Right. I, I love that too. Cause when, when the songs would play, you had you guys going out, dancing around, acting it out. And I thought that was just freaking cool. But I have to say, dude, I am still waiting for this soundtrack to drop because that ending song <laughs> is a freaking banger, dude. Like I remember like at the end, like I was getting so freaking hyped um, and I was just so sad that it was over after after that ending number because that's like my adrenaline just picked up right there. I was headbanging. Monty came, Monty Revolta came next to me. He was swinging the chainsaw. He was headbanging with me. Like it was one of the best experiences I ever had at a haunt. And uh, I, I love the music to death. I mean, the music. I mean, that opening number and that ending number, and even that little romantic number in the middle was just hilarious. But that that <laughs> ending number, man, is just a banger. So I'm hoping, I'm praying that they release that on like Spotify or available to buy because I will bump that in my car like every single day. Uh, that would be good revenue. We've all asked him, but for some reason he just doesn't. He doesn't have the same interest to like really throw his music out there. Right. He's more. You had to experience it. Yeah. On Spotify, I'm pretty sure he only has one song because uh, we all teased him about it. <laughs> but Monty, he knows how to electrify not only the, the audience, but the actors like no one else. Right. If he was, you know, a WWE wrestler, he would be the rock for sure. Oh, dude. <laughs> I could see him fitting perfectly in the, the, the Hulk Hogan era of wrestling. Like, that character, Monty Revolta, because the only reason I say that era is because that was the era of, like, the big-time gimmicks. And I, I could see him so fitting and just talking crap to everyone and, and just being that funny guy in wrestling, but at the same time kicks a lot of ass. And yeah. uh, I found it funny because I, I was very curious about Monty Revolta, and you can actually hire him for parties like, and he's got three different packages. Like, he's got the full-on band, he's got just, like, the two people, and then he's got, like, like uh, just a solo package. And I thought that was like the greatest thing. I was like, if I ever have that extra bullshit cash, I am hiring him immediately. Yeah. yeah. If I'm not mistaken, uh, his two main companions, one of them is Miss Morte. She's right. played by, I'm not sure if they're married, but I know they're together, e even though he won't say anything about that. Her name's Kelsey. <laughs> She's a wonderful lady. And is then, that the zombie, the, the, the zombie one zombie lady. That, zombie always, lady. that always messes everything up and pisses them off? Yeah, she's hilarious, dude. I, I can't tell you how much this year because I missed the whole live performance that he did at Hayride in 2019 that I rewatched my video just to watch them uh, snap at each other. It was hilarious. Like, I think the best part is well, one of the best parts Monty did in that performance was he had a thing of ashes and just dropped them all over the floor. And then the, the girl comes in with the freaking <laughs> the blower and just starts blowing them everywhere and blows her face. Like, I thought it was hilarious. No, the craziest thing about Miss Morte, or Kelsey, I should say, is when she walks around, her makeup and everything is identical to what you see on the screen. Right. And it's pretty intense. Her acting is, like, amazing. Right. And then she starts talking, like, hey, how you doing? Oh, my God, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Oh, my God. And she's so sweet. And I was like, <laughs> no. We need to get no. them on the pod. We need to get Monty and them on the podcast next. Like, that's, like, I have to try to set that one up. I think you could do it. <laughs> I want to. 2021, man, is the year of, of, of big things to come. And, and Monty, Monty, if you're watching, I want you on the show. <laughs> he would probably talk shit to me for like an hour, but, you know, it would be the greatest hour of my life. That's what's up. No, for sure. 
going back and forth with Monty is something not a lot of people dare to do, but I'm not a lot of people. And I got to say, that man, he won. <laughs> that guy's a legend, dude. Not a lot of people can outdo me, but he did nothing. He's like the uh, the CM Punk of, of being on the mic, man. You can't, you can't match him. That's awesome. Um, so it seems like, you know, you had a really good and hopefully, other than the gasoline incident, a, a very safe uh, haunt season. Obviously, the biggest uh, concern and question this year was how are they going to pull off a safe um, COVID guideline haunt season? And Hayride did it no no problem. This was like not a not a problem for them at all they executed it well they did an amazing job um you did an amazing job as well i got to firsthand see you work so that was really cool um so with that being said obviously off season now uh omni adventures uh what's what's next for for you guys oh goodness you just that <laughs> in all honesty we we're all over the place right um, I know we're planning to go to World of Disney, hopefully this year. No, 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 not World of Disney. Disney World. Disney World. Oh, <laughs> I was about to say World of Disney. You can just you can go up the five freeway any day you want, sweetie. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> no, um, Disney World as like my graduation present because nice. I finally graduate school this year. And um, I don't know. We're planning another road trip, maybe for our twenty first. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We are turning twenty one this year. We're very excited. Yeah, so, we're not gonna drive while drinking, but like just a fun road trip. <laughs> and it's easy to plan because our birthdays are six days apart. Yeah. So when's your guys' birthdays? Mine first or yours? The fourteenth and the twentieth <laughs> of September. September, uh, yeah. September babies. We're very good. That means, Virgos, that means cares. by the time you're twenty one, I'll be twenty three. All right. Oh wow! <laughs> Look right. at that. Feeling old. He's climbing up the ladder. <laughs> I don't want to climb up the ladder. I want to stay at this age all the time. This is the perfect <laughs> age. 22, I can do anything I want, buy anything I want, alcohol, drugs, all that, that fun that stuff. That period of 19 and 20. Right. It's not great. It's not. <laughs> it's not great. The only thing you can do at that point when you're 18 is buy a pornography. That's it. And lotto tickets. Who buys that anymore? Right? Who buys that? It's all on the internet for free. Everywhere. It's all on the internet. <laughs> um, I do buy scratch tickets, though. I will admit. Yeah, yeah. scratch tickets are fun. So, so I don't know. We we also want to see how we can move forward towards like making our own because we want to make our own production company at some point. Yeah. Like I'm learning effects makeup. We're gonna be doing props. You're gonna do a lot of storytelling, and I know you want to uh, pull out some like horror films too, as well with Anthony excited for we're that working one. on something you just have to wait yeah COVID, so no uh, yeah no shit in all honesty <laughs> we're just going at it day by day <laughs> yeah no I, I feel that um seems like you guys got a quite the year ahead of you never know what you're going to get yourselves in when you watch an omni adventures video it's, it's so really spontaneous down. because our i mean just think of it this way we had a six flags holiday in the park drive through mm -hmm. the very next video was me ghost hunting alone in Griffith Park. That's true. <laughs> Never just know where this road's gonna take you. Nope. No. And I someday think we might just find a restaurant at the corner of the street. I, I think by the end of each year, you should do a supernatural type thing where it says the road so far, and then just be like, <laughs> where where you guys been and what you've guys done. Um, but that's cool, man. Uh, I'm very happy for you guys. I am a, a big supporter of you guys. Um, Thank you. Thanks. There's another person that I want to get on my Shoot the Shit podcast, um, and that is Theme Park Takeover, Tanner. Yes, Takeover! Tanner, uh, I hit him <laughs> up, and we're going to be scheduling something uh, real soon. He is taking a, a bit of a hiatus to spend time yeah. with family and just take a little vacation. So I told him whenever he's ready, hit me up, and we'll set something up. But uh, through you guys, I met him, such a nice individual, and... Um, I am excited to see what the whole 2021 has to offer for all of us. Um, we're just getting started here, and we have a long journey ahead of us. Uh, so much so that last night before I went to bed, this is how you know, and I it might just, I know a lot of people do this, but for me, at like four in the morning is where I get the best ideas to do shit, and I'm already in bed. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'll be laying in bed and be like, oh, this video sounds good. Maybe I should get up and film it. And then I get up and film it, and then I just lose motivation. And then 
Uh, or I go, oh, this would be a good idea. This would be – so last night, 4 in the morning, uh, more, more, probably about like 4 or 4.30, I was up planning – February and January's upload schedule, and I have them all. And I'm already even going to March's upload schedule. Um, I have <laughs> a lot of content planned out, at least two or three videos every week. Majority you know, I, podcasts. I, I thought two to three videos is something we would manage easily. But then I, I had to remember, I'm a film student. Marlette is a musical theater student. Right. We have very varied schedules. Um, on top of that, we both work. And planning stuff is hard for us. It is. <laughs> no, I, I work full time uh, at, um, at at my old high school, and so I'm working nine thirty to six every single day, and then coming home, shooting yeah. stuff, editing. Uh, the way I the way I looked at it is like if you ever take that hiatus uh, off, and then when you're ready to come back, wait about before you come. But like, okay, say if you take like a a two three week hiatus, so you you take that week off. And then that one week, say if it's two weeks, so you take one week off and that one week, just that whole week, try to film as much content as you can and then start scheduling it one a week. And then every now and then, like that way you'll have one month plan. And then so like maybe like the next week when you're ready, film more videos and then just keep going. So that's how I'm going to do it. That's why I think within starting to, well, with you guys, but uh, tonight and then all the way till next Thursday, I believe. I have podcasts line up for the next couple of weeks. Like, and I got podcasts that all these interviews that I'm doing are going to be going out in the next couple of weeks from shoot the shit to uh, mindless war podcast. Um, we have a lot of people coming on the show. A lot of people that are friends of the channel, a lot of people we're going to be meeting for the first time. Um, and a lot of people with shoot the shit. I want to make it a more of an interesting show where we just talk about anything and just catch up with people. So um, maybe you can expect an invitation back to that pretty soon. I'm impressed on how, thoroughly you run your channel <laughs> this <laughs> it, it blows and it baffles my mind every time just the amount of work you put into this and how you schedule everything you're, you're doing a great job anthony you're doing great sweetie you're doing great sweetie <laughs> i do schedule everything and then eventually something along the line falls apart and then that schedule just gets fucked um it's, it's what it is for us, but, it's like it's oh, like yeah. it's managing two channels yeah. at the same time too because i'm not only managing this one which i just started getting yeah mad slash era uh I, I just started getting back into this one uh i believe new year's eve was when i put the last video 2020 up and then i put shoot the shit out today as of this recording and um now i'm just recording and editing a bunch of videos getting them all ready for the next coming weeks um so I, it's just a matter of Setting a schedule, like I, I told myself, because that's why I was kind of gone from Nights of Horror for a little bit. I was actually doing a lot of stuff on Mad Slash Era, trying to build that channel up, putting out constant gameplays, putting out uh, podcasts with my friends, live streams, um, just trying to build that channel up. And so I was gone doing that for the longest. And every now and then I'd post something on Nights of Horror, but I would take a little, I was taking, I took, I think the last video I posted before New Year's Eve was like December 13th. So I, I was doing little hiatus from that and then it was i think n december 30th i was like all right now i gotta schedule something for both channels so i can have a working schedule and i, I figured it out for nights of horror i still gotta figure it out for mad slash era but three videos three to two videos a week is what i'm trying to do for nights of horror um whether it be two podcasts and an original video or two original videos on a podcast who knows? I mean, podcasts are easy to film, easiest to edit. So we'll see what the future hold, uh, holds for us, man. I, I, my, my main focus for Nights of Horror right now uh, is to get to 2,000 subscribers, which we are almost there. Almost oh, there. Oh, you got that. Make sure you almost subscribe there. to Nights of Horror, Matt Slash Era. Matt Slash Era. Matt Slash Era actually just hit 520 subscribers recently. So we're already, oh, half, shoot. We're already halfway to 1,000, which I'm very happy with. Bonus gamers. Some bonus yeah. gamers. I got you. <laughs> Hey, you got Xbox, man. You ever want to make an appearance, you let me know. We got an <laughs> Oculus now. We game game. Bro, now I'm going to have to come over and film some stuff with Oculus. Do it. Let's go. You got uh, Resident Evil on Oculus? See Marlene play that? Bro, I could really do Resident <laughs> Evil alone. Which one did we do? Three? We did. Uh, so I played four, and then we played five. Right. Oh, five. Marlene, for some reason, is not very good at quick time events or button matching, <laughs> as I learned. Uh, at first, I thought we were doing something wrong, and then I realized the only thing wrong was 
whose hands the controller was in. <laughs> <laughs> My thumb just goes so slow. Like, this is probably the fastest I can go for button mashing. It's very sad. Oh, um, I, I, I got to the point now where the faster I button mash, I could start feeling the cramp come in. That's how fast I uh, button mash. No, He's like, like ah! I, tried, I tried the index finger. I tried this. He told me to twitch or something. Yeah. I don't know. I tried everything. There's technique. Uh, I tried like doing the remote in this at the same time. It does it doesn't work? So if you want some good, you want some good content for your channel, you just gotta buy uh, Resident Evil Seven for the Oculus and then play that. <laughs> there you go. That game is terrifying. I, I think the biggest game for 2021 that I'm looking forward to this year so far is Resident Evil Eight um, Village. I'm super excited for that. I don't know. I don't think it's two player, but I think they're going to be remastering Resident Evil 4 this year as well, which is the plan uh, with the Resident Evil 7 engine. So I'm excited that I get to play that for the first time too. Nice. Resident Evil 4, best Resident Evil ever, period. I, uh, when Resident Evil 3 Remastered came out, it was the start of the pandemic when it came out. I bought it. I was off of work. I bought it, started playing it at midnight, and finished it at 6 a.m. that morning. Whoa. Did not put the controller down. I was just so invested, and I had to kill Nemesis because that motherfucker – can just go to hell. Uh, stars. So, uh, I guess the best way to end this is go check out the Omni Adventures on YouTube right now. Go subscribe. The link will be in the bio in the description below. Um, and hit them up on Instagram and Twitter as well. Um, I think you guys, what do you, are you more active on Instagram or? Instagram. Instagram. We Instagram. Were I know. I was surprised to find out you had a Twitter because I tried to tag you guys yesterday uh, yeah. for a post, and then all of a sudden I get a follow from you guys. I'm like, oh, they do have a Twitter. So we saw, I only saw that because Tanner retweeted it. Yeah. But I don't really, we don't use Twitter in general. Because, we just don't know how to use it. Well, I figured out how to use it. It's just, I don't know, it's so negative on there. It's it's so like, I I mean, I see all these people posting tweets, and I'm like, are you are are you still a nice person? <laughs> are you sure? Like, what? I don't know. We tried to do like I do Instagram, he does Twitter, or he or he does Instagram, I do Twitter. It's mm -hmm. just we don't know how to use it well. Instagram's better. I Instagram agree. is better. I agree. Yeah. Uh, pictures. So Instagram is when we find like most of the theme park like YouTubers. Right. That we like. Yeah. So. Twitter's full of complainers. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Um, yeah, go follow them on Instagram at OADV, is it underscore media? Underscore media. Underscore media. <laughs> go follow them on, uh, for that on Instagram and Omni Adventures on YouTube. Um, if you guys are new to our channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification below every time we put up a God. new video and, you know, hit that like button and leave some comments down below. Uh, cause I know the wonderful people at the Omni Adventures want to read your positive feedback. So we do. We read every comment. We and when you when you subscribe and leave comments on our video, Tom Knights of Horse sent you. Um with that being said, uh of course make sure to follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. Check out our merch shop. Links all on the bio below. Uh we love each and every one of you. Stay safe, wear your mask, social distance. Twenty twenty one is gonna be the year going to be great. Stay sober. Don't get pulled over. Woo there you go. And we will see you guys next time. We are out. Bye. <laughs>